Hello, this is Matt, and did you know in 2021 they're changing the design of the American Silver Eagle? I'm sure you did, but did you know they're not doing it till the middle of the year? So what that means is there's going to be a point where we're going to have old design 2021s and new design 2021s. And my concern is that transition. I think there's going to be something that happens, either an error or some kind of variety. Because if you look back through U.S. coin history, we've always struggled with transitions. So today, I wanted to look back at coin history, and you can either look at this book or a more modern book, because they actually tell the same story. And depending on your interest level, this will either put you to sleep, or it's an action-packed thriller. So if you're like me, you're going to consider this an action-packed thriller. In 1913, we transitioned from the V nickel to the Buffalo nickel. This Buffalo nickel was a love design, but it really wasn't designed properly for circulation. Right away, that type one mound, the five cents would wear off. So they moved to type two with a line to recess five cents. But then we also learned that the dates wear off and Dateless buffaloes are very common. If you think to 1936, you have the three and a half legged buffalo. 1937, three legs. And these are extremely valuable varieties, but you could almost tell that buffalo was just wearing out. So in 1938, we finally, after 25 years, we were able to put black diamond buffalo, that bison, to rest. And in came the Jefferson Nickel in 1938. In God We Trust was added. So maybe not all the coins had full steps, but people could still get to Monticello, right? And then you had the wartime nickels in 1942 all the way to 1945 with that big mint mark on the reverse. And this was the first time we saw the P mint mark for Philadelphia. This was a big deal. And in 2005, that bison did try to reemerge, ended up on the reverse of the 2005 nickel, and then somebody speared them. Another valuable variety. So the question is, was Jefferson the first person to be put on a coin? No, because Washington was on it in 1932. Was Washington the first person on a coin? No, it was Abraham Lincoln, because Abraham Lincoln got on the penny or the cent in 1909. In 1909, we transitioned from that Indian head to the Lincoln cent, and they shared the year. And that was the year also when In God We Trust was added, E Pluribus Unum was added, and you had that VDB controversy where the designer had VDB on the reverse, clearly. But then people didn't like it. They thought it was too brash. So it was removed. So in the middle of 1909, not only did you transition from Indian Head to Lincoln, now you had two designs, and those VDBs were extremely collectible. So it's just interesting, right? But the one thing I enjoy about the Lincoln scent is the mint mark has always been on the obverse. So when you're putting it in books, you don't have to flip the coin to see what mint mark there is. You just have to look at the front. So the Lincoln scent was almost designed for collectors, and I think that's why people love it. Now, there were issues with the Lincoln scent. In 1922, they forgot to put a D on it. To make up for that in 1955, they hit it twice. Don't know why. You also had 1960, small date, large date. 1970, small date, large date. In 1984, they gave Lincoln two ears. And then they flip-flop back and forth from 1998 to 2000, whether it was a close AM or a far AM. And then in 2009, there was four different reverses. And don't even get me started about 1982. You know, that transition from zinc to copper, where there ended up being seven different varieties. You had different material, you had different size dates. Seven varieties, but I heard a rumor there was an eighth, the eighth wonder of the world, which was that small date D, right? Everybody looks for that 1982 small date with a Denver mint mark. If you find it, you're rich. 
So in 1916, we transitioned from the Barber dime to the Mercury dime. They shared the same year. And 1916 was the year we added In God We Trust and E Pluribus Unum. This was an, a magnificent design that fit it all. And that 1916 D is extremely rare. And so what if your Mercury dime doesn't have full bands or full torch? And remember that year where they struggled to figure out whether it was 42 or 41? They kind of stamped a 42 over a 41? So no coin is perfect, but the Mercury dime is very close. In 1945, World War II ends and FDR passes away. So they changed the Mercury dime to the Roosevelt dime starting in 1946. And you have that mint mark on the reverse. Again, adding to that drama to flip to see whether it's a D or an S. But in 1968, they came to their senses, stopped putting the mint mark on the reverse and started putting it on the front. So thank you to the dime makers. In 1916, we have godly money. In God we trust is on every coin. Nothing can go wrong, right? But think about the 1916 Standing Liberty Quarter. It had two major issues. First one was the eagle looked like it was landing. So they decided to put stars under it. So it you know, maintain flight. But the real issue was the exposed breast on the obverse. How could we have an exposed breast in 1916 on godly money? So what they decided to do in 1917 was put chain mail on as a shirt. So we covered up that exposed breast and we were back to being righteous. Another issue with the Standing Liberty Quarter was the dates were wearing off. So in 1925, they ended up recessing the date. They fixed that issue, but they couldn't predict that the Depression was coming. So if you'll notice, the Standing Liberty Quarter ends in 1930. There was no quarters in 1931. And the 1932 quarter that came, the Washington Quarter, was only meant to be a one-year commemorative. That was supposed to be it. So we did the 1932 Washington, 1933 there were no quarters. But then 1934 rolled around, they needed to create a quarter and we continued with the Washington design. Also in 1916, we transitioned from the barber half to the walking liberty half dollar. And this is an amazing design. In God We Trust was already there. E Pluribus Unum was added. So the coin became beautiful out of many one and she kept her shirt on this time everything was perfect it was a great design except for the mint mark they couldn't decide they first they put the mint mark on the obverse then they put it on the reverse and the other issue they couldn't predict was they didn't make coins on certain years so if you look down the list there's no coins in 22 24 25 26 30 31 and 32. Now you may wonder why 1916 was such a monumental year. It was because there was a law that said you have to maintain a design for 25 years. So if you think the Barber series started in 1892, and even though Teddy Roosevelt said we need better coins in 1906, we had to wait until 1916 to complete the 25 year Barber series. But 1916 came and we were rolling. So we went from that barber half to the walking liberty half. Amazing coin. 1948, we had Benjamin Franklin. Now, Benjamin Franklin was not a president, but he was a founding father. And if you look at that series, it was amazing. The only issue was 1955, where he had a little bit of a Bugs Bunny. And so what if the bell doesn't have full bell lines? I mean, this is a magnificent coin. And it was running strong till 1963. So it had 15 years, not quite 25, but 1963 was the year that Kennedy was assassinated. So to honor JFK, they decided to put him on the 1964 half dollar. So they cut the Benjamin Franklin series short to 15 years. Then we started with JFK for that final 90% silver half dollar that we all love. So now to the king of all silver coins, the silver dollar. Now the crime of 1873 eliminated the silver dollar and it wasn't until 1878 
the Bland Allison Act, which restored the coinage. And the Morgan dollar in 1878 was created, but it had some issues. They couldn't decide whether it was eight feathers or seven feathers. But the Morgan, as much as we think it's been cherished, actually was not in demand. And by 1904, it kind of was playing second to gold. Plus there was a shortage of silver. So after 1904, we stopped making the silver dollars again. And it wasn't until the 1918 Pittman Act, which authorized more silver. So we actually melted over 270 million Morgan dollars to create future silver dollars. So if you think about that, all those Morgans were melted down and in 1921, silver dollars came back. But this was another transition. They dusted off the Morgan dies. We made a 1921 Morgan, which is the most common Morgan. But we also had this new design, the new peace dollar. But there were issues there too. The 1921 peace dollar had a high relief, which meant that when you stacked it, it wasn't stacking. So they had to redesign that, and in 1922, came out with a more commercial design, something that could be stacked and used. And that 1922, 1923 are extremely common peace dollars. We probably all have those. If you think about it, 1928 is the rarity. Those are, that's the rare peace dollar that you're looking for. 1929 to 1933, no peace dollars due to the depression. They had one more spurt of energy in 1934, 1935, but then it stopped. 1936 onward, no more silver dollars. So this whole transition has been amazing for U.S. coins, but it proves to us that transitions are tough. And right now in 2020, we're looking at 2021 to the change of the reverse of our American Silver Eagle. And if we look back at our track record, we're not great at transitioning. So I am interested to hear what you have to say. I'm not sure whether I want to buy both or just buy the new one or just stick to the old design. It's a consideration. And I'm wondering 50 years from now where there'll be people talking about, you remember 2021? So thank you for going through this history lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I think this is a action-packed thriller. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to be able to share the story with you, and I hope you learned something. If you have any other comments or any other ideas, put them in the comment section, and we'll continue the conversation. I'll talk to you later. So by 1916, all the coins have in God we trust. So we have godly money, right? There's nothing to worry about. But then you think about the quarter. That Standing Liberty quarter, type one, had two major issues. The eagle on the reverse looked like it was landing. So they decided to put three stars under it to raise it. But the main drama was that nipple.